Ferrari cost 600,000, stop playing with me. Hundreds with the blue faces, feeling nipsy. Louis V briefcases, getting tipsy. Keep it with me, it's a murder if a nigga tempt me. The streets talking, you niggas know what it do. With some money, I could never imagine you. I be ducked off, I ain't got nothing to prove. I'm in Malibu with a nigga fool. 400. Welcome to another episode of the Phone the Podcast. I'm Stevie, this YG. And today, we got a legend, West Coast legend, in front of us. We have a five-time Grammy-nominated artist on the couch, multi-platinum. He even got a diamond record. He's a magician when it comes to making this music, an instrumentalist, just producer, songwriter. And he got a label, Easy Money. Todd Dolla Sign. What up, yo? What deal, Todd? What's happening? Gang is in the building. Todd, what yes, up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, whatever it is. So I just want to just jump right into it. Let's just do a little reflecting because it's been years and years of the Ty and YG like dynamic of making music and everybody know already. Like, did you envision it being like it is, like y'all being as big as it, you are today? Uh, yeah, for sure. It was no telling to be completely honest in the beginning, but this is what I saw and I see it growing even further than this. You know, it's just the beginning still, even though it's been so many years. Hello. I know a lot of times, um, as soon as you mention Ty and YG, everybody want to say Tooted and Booted. How do you even feel about Tooted and Booted? I feel like maybe that's just because you from out here that you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the whole world feel like you know, the whole world. Ty and YG Tooted and Booted. But. Hey, I, I, like, like I used to tell Ty this shit all the time. Like, I, tell, I told everybody this all the time. I actually, for a, a period of time, you from, I used to walk around telling people I hate it. Tooted and booted. Not like that, though. I'm going to break it down, though. You know what I'm saying? That song changed our life. You know what I'm saying? That song did a lot for niggas. And that song turned the city up. But, like, when that song came out and it blew up, like, people was talking about, oh, that's why he's a one-hit wonder. Oh, Mr. Tooted and booted. Why is he so? I'm just like, y'all niggas got me fucked up, nigga. I got music, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had shit before Tooted and booted. Like, just as far as music and like uh, identity as an artist, you feel me? Niggas used to just be like, oh, that's Tudor and that's Mr. Tudor and Buddhist. So you feel me? I used to get mad, like, y'all niggas got me fucked up. <laughs> you feel me? So I used to walk around talking about, I hate that song. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That song changed niggas' lives. And then, you feel me? That's like a classic record. I performed that motherfucker to this day. And Same. the whole crowd sing all the words. Nigga ain't gotta say shit. Yeah. You just let them rock. Me, yeah. me personally, I ain't like the song, right? I'm going to tell you why. Because I feel like that night y'all recorded it, y'all recorded Relax too. And then y'all went to the club and y'all nah, performed we didn't them do both. Relax. No, we didn't I do Relax that I think y'all did do Relax night. that night. Nah. It was probably in the same month. The same, it like, probably, yeah, kids yeah. It, we ended up it performing definitely both. was in the same time period. And them songs came out the same time period. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Ty probably did, like, I did, I recorded my verse on Relax. And then I sent the shit to Ty, and I told Ty, finish that shit. And Ty did his shit. So I know we didn't record, you know what I'm saying? The same, the same, the same Okay, yes. Yeah, I sent that shit. Now we yeah. get a chance to clear that up, because everybody thought it was like the same night y'all made those two songs. And I'm like, damn, I like to relax so much. I'm like, man, what, what, I, what about, I definitely I'm picking up two and booted, but I understood because nah, they the couldn't pick up picked, nah, Pussy the, Killer. No, nah, the streets picked up, the streets chose two and booted. Bro, that shit was going crazy in the streets. And, um... Nigga had pressed to get it on the radio. Like, a nigga had to do a little pressing and shit, but it ended up on the radio. And then once it finally made it on the radio, the radio station had got the reaction from the people calling in, like, hey, play that shit again. That's my shit. Y'all finally playing this on the radio, nigga? This that shit. You feel me? So the radio reactor was like, what the fuck? And then, like, our whole movement, you feel me, that we had, we was considered, like, we was on some like underground shit at the time, but like niggas had like real fan base. And like when that song hit the radio, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers start realizing like, oh, these niggas really got people out here. Like, yeah. Speaking of like the YG and, like the YG and Ty connection, a part of that connection is mustard. We can't say it without mustard either. It's like, Ty, like how do you feel like knowing that y'all like on the Mount Rushmore, y'all, Three for sure, Mustard, YG, and Ty, of like West Coast, bringing the West Coast back. How do you feel about that? Oh, it's amazing, man. Uh, 
just seeing the whole growth of that shit. When Mustard came around, he was just DJing the shit. And I didn't even know, but he was paying attention to me doing beats. Till one day he came up to me, he was like, hey bro, let me get some sounds. I'm like, for what? He was like, I'm finna get on the beats. Da, 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 da. Uh, fast forward, <clears throat> you know, uh, Tutu and Buddha had already happened. I think his first, what was that first mixtape after that? Four Fingers. Four Fingers mm -hmm. came out. That was already took taken over the streets. Um, I was coming off of like 21st and La Brea over there by my grandmother house. And uh, he was turning in to pull up on TC. He was like, hey, Ty, I'm finna pass you up on these beats. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, all right, let's see. <laughs> Next week after that, nigga, uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, Rack City oh, right. came out. Shit. And it's like, I also want to give you your flowers because like seeing your crib, like getting to go to your crib and all that. I'm just, I'm a kid from Watts. So getting to go to your crib, it really inspired me. I'm like, damn, oh, you can get some paper. Like you can, you, you inspired me for sure to want to get some paper. I ain't gonna lie. I'm like walking to your crib, big crib, YSL everywhere, doing your thing. You feel me? Get down. I'm like, wow, big it's not impossible. Around. So big I appreciate you for sure. Todd, nigga gonna give you your flowers too. Cause like you one of the homies. I tell this shit to everybody, and I be happy as fuck when I be telling them this. I'm like, man, this nigga Todd, Todd been the same nigga ever since a nigga met this nigga. He ain't never switched up, act different. When he had his biggest records, and then, you know what I'm saying, when, when niggas was in off season, like, the nigga ain't never switched up. The nigga been the same nigga from day one. So I be telling niggas, like, a nigga appreciate having a homie like that, bro. That shit mean a lot. And you also like you also like talk niggas a lot with this music shit, you know what I'm saying? Like from recording nigga the song structuring, nigga layering, layering shit, Man, you know what I'm saying? Vocals. <laughs> you feel me? Ty taught a nigga all Man, that type of shit. Uh y'all taught me a lot. You and Mustard alone, like like you say, Tootie and the Buddha is the record that changed not only your life, but my life. Like before that, I was like, at the highest levels of music, I felt like working with Timberlake, working with Will I Am, working with 50, working with all these dudes. And like, like you say, the layering, putting so many things to what I thought, like as a musician, like even like going to different jazz schools and hanging out with all these different musicians, playing in churches and all that. And what I learned from y'all was to simplify this shit. It's like, First thing I heard when Big B told me about you, he was like, <clears throat> check out this kid from Bompton or whatever. And I looked at your MySpace page. You had She a Model. You had... She a Model one crazy. Remember that? <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, at that Pussy time. Killer. And Pussy Killer. Pussy Killer. Like mm -hmm. all those. Uh, mm -hmm. your, what was it? Top five or whatever? Mm -hmm. And uh, all those songs, to me, I was like, what the fuck? Because like, I'm used to playing bass and playing keys and playing getting string parts and getting mm -hmm. horn parts and singing all these backgrounds and you only had like drums, <laughs> maybe one instrument and one vocal. No it sounded like you recorded no that nut. shit in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> I but, definitely but, did. <laughs> <laughs> but this shit was going. So I learned that and that's like, that's how Tudor and the Booty came. Yo, yeah, 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 cause a hey, fun fact, like, like, you know what I'm saying? People don't probably know this, but Ty, Ty TC, and um, Nano or whoever else in Big B, you feel me? Them niggas was at Tide House. They made two of the booty without me. They called me like, hey, we got a song for you to do. Nigga, I pull up, nigga, the song already done. Nigga, I just put some verses on that motherfucker. That's you feel me? That's how that shit happened. It's prize pick time. Yeah, it's prize pick time. It's time to let all that barbershop talk about sports go to the next level by making daily projections on any NBA or NFL game. Prize Picks is a skill-based fantasy game where all you have to do is just select more or less on the players that you love to watch. If you really think you're a hooper like my boy YG think he is. <laughs> but you're really just sitting at home on the couch? Use Prize Picks. You can get an entry in like 60 seconds. All you got to do is go over to prizepicks.com, use the promo code 400, and they will literally match you up to $100 on your first 
deposit. That means if you put 50, they're giving you 50. If you put 100, they're giving you 100. It's really that easy. All you got to do is go over to prizepicks.com or download the Prize Picks app and make sure you use promo code 400. Let them know we sent you. Hey, hey, but speaking of Big B, I got a question. I got like my little my little cardboard boards and shit. I'm going to just yeah. come ask you shit, you know what I'm saying, throughout this motherfucker. Who was Big B to you and what did Big B do for you? Big B's my big bro, big homie, uh, mentor, uh, a lot to my life, man. Uh, he uh, just was one of them people that guided me. When my parents uh, divorced, I was about 16, I moved over to uh, the same area he was living in. And uh, he just like guided me, kept me out of the bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Like when even my brother, he went to jail for life from just hanging out with the wrong people, I feel like. And uh, with me and Big B, he was like, nah, I need you to stay in this studio. I need you to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do this, like you got it for real. Uh, so, you know, after just, like I said, just years and years of uh, hanging out and working and him knowing my shit and my style, he must have met you on the side and was like, yo, it's this kid you need to work with, YG, I'm telling you. And uh, we end up yeah. linking. <laughs> I always tell people, nigga, Toot in the Boot was like the, the third song so, we ever did. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We did like two other songs. I don't even remember which ones they was. But. Nigga, I remember. I forgot the name of that motherfucker. It was, it was fire, though, <laughs> nigga. Oh, my God. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. But no, we definitely did uh, more records. And um, Big big B, you know what I'm saying? Same, Loki, same story for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? He... You know what I'm saying? He was like my first like manager and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But he was also a blood, you know what I'm saying, gang member. So, you know what I'm saying? He was like guiding the nigga, managing the nigga with the street shit. Also, you feel me, at a like a younger age type shit. But um B Big B is how I met Ty and then met Mustard. You know what I'm saying? I knew who Mustard was because he was DJing, you know what I'm saying, all the little ghetto parties and I used to be there performing shit so I had already like knew who he was but I'm from the whole another side of town they f all from like the same side of town and shit so Big B connected us all and it created all this shit you know what I'm saying um shout out to Big B you know what I'm saying he, rest he, up Big B yeah he passed and shit during COVID and all that so long live Big B we appreciate you and all that Man, Big B yeah. had us all at Ladera Park, deep as a motherfucker. Yeah, dog. Turn, we turned the city up when we started being on that side to get to come around y'all like that. Cause yeah. we, we got kicked out of Paramount. So we migrated to Inglewood. Then we got kicked out of Inglewood. And then we migrated to like the, the, the Ladera era. So I'm like, man, it's dope. And I got to meet Big B. Beautiful soul, man. Great dude. Like you said, same with Ty. Just the same no matter what happened. Same dude no matter what. Gonna be the same. I wanted to ask you, like, where'd you get the confidence from the still thing you to tell Mustard, like, I can give it all to you, but. You can't make what I make. Like, where did that confidence come from? Uh, I feel like just not being a hater and just being <laughs> like, <laughs> like just doing what I'm supposed to do. Like, man, you work with a lot of legendary um, producers. One time, I'm not gonna say the street because I don't know if he still got the studio over there. But I came in the back house and you was working with Battle Cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where uh, is all that music and what was it like <laughs> to work with Battle Cat? Oh man, Battle Cat, one of my favorites ever. We born in the same month, all that shit. Uh, he just, uh, he just one of the best to ever fucking do it, bro. Like, yeah, no, for sure. Man, he walked in there and just grabbed the guitar and was like, and it sounded like noise. And then when they did a playback, I'm like, what? Yeah. And he was in there, he was on the keys, chords was in the chords was in there. Chords. I'm like, Shout out damn, chords. Yeah, man. You feel me? That was a chord spot, right? Yeah, the, off of uh, Slauson and Ninth Ave. Yeah, yeah. Slauson and Ninth Ave. Spaced uh, out. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Niggas recorded a lot of. Joints up over there. That's like why I said, road. where is that music? No, niggas record a uh, lot of shit. Up I feel over like there. it's all out on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. You just gotta remember the name of the motherfucker. I know one song that's on YouTube that the people need to go look up. Um Better ask somebody. That's a that video <laughs> cold. That, better <laughs> ask somebody is a cold. That's a banger that, that they sleep on. But yeah. I remember um being at your house. And you was like, man, it, you was you was like thinking about the song. You're like, I'm gonna write a song about a female, but I'm gonna describe it in this crazy way. Yeah. And Caso had made a beat. And I remember you telling me you was gonna make the song, and then I was like, man, he's must have scrapped it. 
And then I was on YouTube in that Oh, oh My God. Yeah, produced oh by Casa. Yeah. But it never came out like mainstream. But if you are, go check that out on YouTube. That's It's a banger for sure, for sure. Casa, um, all, also Casa. one of the greatest to ever touch an MPC and the keyboard, man. Right. Speak on it. Let, let, let them know who G. Casa is. G. Casa, uh, rest in peace. Long live G. Casa. Was Long live G. Casa. One of my best friends ever. Uh, also game, one game. of the best musicians. He was around in the beginning during the time when we made Tooted and Booted and mm -hmm. all these other songs. Yeah. And uh, shit, man, he ended up getting caught up in some crossfire and shit. But other than that, uh, like one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, and then like, bro, energy in the studio was always like, like I used to love when I pull up and that nigga Jacasso up in there, I'm like, all right, Ben. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's finna be some shit. Yeah, because he was like, you know what I'm saying? He was like, ex shit out, like with the gang banging and this shit. Yeah. But player though, <laughs> you feel me? So his whole little shit, I'm like, all right, Ben. I need Jacasso in the studio <laughs> for sure. <laughs> no, Van I don't need Jacasso, huh? <laughs> he was like, on Van Ant. Yeah, on Van Ant. <laughs> like, that nigga used to be burnt, ex shit out. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fucking uh, good on the keys. He was self-taught, uh, MPC, making the beats, uh, sampling. He was good at that. He was good at rapping. Y'all can go listen to his old music, all that shit. Yeah. Legend. No, you go listen to his music, it's bangers. Speaking of like working with great producers, let's just get right to what everybody want to know. Wait, well, speaking of, speaking of, speaking of Jacasso, and we brought up, we, we brought up um, Van Ness, you know what I'm saying? JM. Yeah, JM. You gotta I, say JM. Yeah. Man. I, like I heard, like I was in a studio with you, you know what I'm saying? I think like a year ago or something. And you was playing me your album that you got, that you was working on with Mustard. And then you and Joe Moses was also playing me an album that y'all was working on. And I was like, I'm like, all right, bet. Is that motherfucker ever coming out? Yeah, uh, we just... Finishing it up, I ended up doing, you know, more shit. My schedule got crazy. His schedule got crazy. He got a hit out right now, but I'm dumb. Man, that shit going crazy. Dumb. Going viral. Um, yeah. But we we still finna drop that shit, Whoop 2. Okay, know? yeah, uh, Whoop 2. A yeah, lot of yeah. fans know if you fuck with me or you fuck with Joe Moses, you know about Whoop 1. We finna drop that Whoop 2. Yeah. It's number banger after banger for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, that shit was sounding fire. On the game, that's why I brought it up and shit. Shout out Joe Moses and shit. He got a he got a record out, but I'm that dumb going brazy. If you don't know about it, go check it out. And and speaking of working with everybody, great. Everybody just wants to know, man. What it's like working with Kanye? What is that like? Amazing, bro. Life changing. Very educational. Uh, just seeing his perspective not only on music but on life. Good dude, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Can't nobody tell me shit about bro. You done put too many people on and changed so many lives and and uh, I appreciate bro, you know. I've been knowing him for years. And uh, same, always, you know what I'm saying? Just as, the, as he says about me, same nigga bro. Whether it's the, the height of his shit or, or not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's one specific thing you can say you learned from him like that? It's like Kanye showed me this, and now now it turned me up. Uh, to uh, take my time with this shit and not just be so, you know. Or we just did it right now. We could just drop that shit in for in <laughs> Vultures. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the current single that we had out uh, from the Vultures album, we recorded that shit four days from when we released it in Saudi. Just caught a vibe. Bump came through with a song he had already been working on. We ended up recording all the verses, changing the beat a million times, still in four days, <laughs> and then dropping that motherfucker. So um, just knowing that you know that you know, you know what I'm saying, and going for it, and nobody can tell you shit, that's something you're going to learn from being around Ye. Hey, so look, speaking of, speaking of Ye, I was in the studio with you and Ye in Vegas at the day them clips went viral and shit. Yeah. Outside of the viral moments and shit, I walk in the studio, which was the hotel room and shit, it's vibed out and all that. I'm in there vibing for a minute. And then I just start looking and shit. And I see, I'm looking at the TV. 
And I'm like, the fuck is that? And it's animated porn on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, these niggas is turked up. Is that how y'all record this shit? Porn everywhere? Nah, that was just like one day, one of oh. his uh, <laughs> one of his artists that he was working with was just coming through showing him visuals for whatever he was working on at the time. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, just a, that an shit, incredible. I, like, I wish I knew his name to shout him out because that nigga was hard. Like yeah, and all the shit. I'm like, bro, like, what's this? I I, I told the homie, I'm like, hey, my my sessions is born. I gotta turn <laughs> my sessions up. He got it going, anime yeah, going. Nigga record like this. Nigga. Nah, but I, I will say we didn't have some crazy sessions, man. Just like recording the Vultures album, which started. I would say like my parts of it in LA, I don't know where he started his parts when we were on some separate shit, but then we got together and we started in Tokyo. We went from Tokyo to Florence, Italy. We went from Italy to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. We went from Riyadh to fucking Dubai, then to Alula, Saudi Arabia, then back to Dubai then to LA again. So it's just like that alone. And then like the shit that was going on, like in between, you can imagine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, can you give me something hey, that's, that's look, exclusive? I look, so, 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 so speaking of Dubai, <laughs> like before I pulled up on y'all niggas in, in Vegas and shit, I pulled up on y'all niggas in Dubai and shit. He pulled up, he pulled up on us in Dubai. And that's when we were introduced for the first time to the cherry bomb. <laughs> the, the motherfucking cherry bomb yes i life, did I life changing i must say <laughs> hello i introduced these niggas to the cherry bomb and them niggas stopped blowing they wouldn't stop blowing my phone up after that and this is not a motherfucking joke it's not a lie it's no cap so for I everybody stand behind the cherry bomb you know um i recommend it <laughs> And uh, <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> hey, I appreciate that, bro. Love. <laughs> Nigga, you was in Dubai for like a month or two. I know you smoke weed. Like, you smoke weed throughout the day. You smoking right now. You you in my building on my red couch smoking weed. I ain't even tell you that shit was bull, but you smoking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm fucking with you. But look, how the fuck you survive in Dubai without smoking no weed for like, how, like however long you went? How did you survive, bro? <laughs> Um, because you like, you and Snoop and Wiz, like y'all like top three pie heads in my, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, shit, I've been going to Dubai probably like the last five, six years. And uh, I feel like it's usually around December, November. And I've been doing this thing where I'm already knowing that's gonna happen. So I'll just take the whole month off of December every year. Okay. Mm. You know? Okay, okay, I like that. So I, I, I was used to it already. And it's been a million times that I've just said, fuck it, I'm gonna just quit for a while, you know, get my head together. And then I start back again and get my head together. <laughs> 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 like, so we, like, help you get your head together and shit? Yeah, depending on how I'm feeling, what's going on, I feel like I'm very, like, <sighs> so. Yeah. This shit like calm me down and get me more focused when most people say they would lose focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See the alcohol like 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 I've been like uh like damn near 90 days sober and shit, you know what I'm saying? That's beautiful. Yeah, appreciate that, bro. And you know like everybody that know they know me like like you know what I'm saying I was on the verge of 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 of, of alky alcoholic, you know what I'm saying? Um like I went so many years drinking alcohol every day, half a bottle to myself, all that type of shit. And um, I I felt like the alcohol would help me get myself together, but really it was really like I was crashing, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I've been sober for like three months. I just wanted to let y'all know that. That's good. That's Keep amazing. Going. So getting yeah. back to the Kanye album, like, cause I, I view you as a perfectionist. When I was seeing you like, when you used to get in, like how you, you was a perfectionist, I used to be like, I could just see it in his face, like, damn, Ty, do it again, do it again. You said that you didn't say the word right, you was a perfectionist. So, and, I, and in my, my mind, I think Kanye would be a perfectionist too. Like, um, can you give us like an exclusive about the album that you, just for us, we can have some, you know, some exclusive. I don't know what you want, <laughs> shit. Uh, I don't know what to say, man. It's, it's not much you can't say? 
it's it's it's, uh, it's just been a motherfucking journey, bro. Like, yeah, I am a perfectionist. I do do my shit a, a, a gang of times, but this man, nigga, he'll go through so many snares. You know what I'm saying? So many the elevator fucking, right there, but he taking us there. So many like kicks, so many 808s. Take off hi hats, put them back on. No hi hats on the whole album. No repeats on the whole album. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we already got the songs done. We already had the album done like ten times. <laughs> and I'll be completely honest, bro. Like, who can y'all name that's ever had a better rollout than this? No, it's genius. <laughs> Kanye is smart, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> You feel me? I hate when niggas be talking like shit about Kanye. I'm like, bro, you think he really just doing dumb shit? Man, that nigga is calculating as fuck. Man. Everything for a reason. Take it the yeah. fuck. Hey, black people, take notes. Is it is it true you like re-recorded all your verses? That's why they pushed the day back. Uh, no, nah, I didn't re-record all my verses, but we don't want it to be one of those just like one time listen. All oh, this shit gonna last forever, you know? Hey, uh, yeah. you feel me? It's outside of that. Like, would you ever cut your dreads off? <laughs> <laughs> like, the ladies want to know, would you cut them off and what they smell like? You feel me? The bitches want to know. Well, you got to ask one of them bitches that I'll be <laughs> dealing with. You know what I'm saying? No, but I'm saying I got bitches that's hitting me. Like, they like, I'm man, sure the bitches I want time. I'm sure at least one of them bitches done been through these dreads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single. I'm mingling. You know what I'm saying? Hey, well, hey, hey, ladies, there you have it. So all the ladies is hitting my phone, talking about hook him up with the homie and all that. You know what I'm saying? He just said it. There it goes. He said I don't know if I would ever cut my dress off, though. No. But, uh, this is a part of you, Ty. I don't think you're... It's just, a, it's just who you are. Yeah. I couldn't see you with no waves, a fade, a ball head, or something like that. I'm sure I would still be a sex symbol <laughs> either way. Hey, 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 have you ever sung to the pussy to get the panties? Like sung to a bitch, like to get her panties off. Uh, I don't think so though. Damn. Or if you counted, like she was at my concert, I sung. And you she ended up backstage and became a backstage bandit. No, 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 no. Fuck that. That's like talking about at that's the pussy like door, singing at the pussy door. I'm talking about the pussy. You, <laughs> I'm talking about you. You got a girl, and she's a baddie, of course, and like. Mm -hmm. Y'all on a date or whatever, or you got her back at the room and all that, and it's just like y'all vibing, but you start singing to the bitch, and sh nah, that turned into a fuck session. I ain't session. Even been that raw. I'll be real. Oh, Maybe man. I should try if that. I was an R&B nigga, you would see the yeah. type of shit I'd be on. I say that I would shit say the closest like, to that is like her coming to the studio with me and having one of those nights where I'm recording, mm -hmm. and we in the same room, so she's hearing me sing. And that pussy getting wet. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, you R&B niggas, y'all got the cheat code and shit, like, like, nigga, y'all niggas cold. Yeah, like, you been in a few, like, public, like, relationships. What's your love life like right now? Like, what you, what you on right now? Uh, Sucio boys. <laughs> hey, that's on Bloods. I've been around this nigga, you feel me, recently. He's on bullshit. Sniper? Yeah, I love it, though. <laughs> I love it, because, like, my whole time knowing Ty, Majority of the years, he been in a relationship. So like nigga ain't never been able to do no burnt out nigga shit with the homie because he always been in a relationship. You got a type? Uh, beautiful. She gotta be beautiful. I don't care what race. Uh, I've been hearing like the little, uh, oh Ty don't fuck with us, he don't fuck, nah fuck that. Like I love beautiful black women. I love beautiful Spanish women. I love beautiful Arab women. I love Same. beautiful Asian women. Just Same. beautiful. Yeah. Same. Just beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful woman across the board. I'm glad that you said that because I I go through um, a similar situation thing. Like, I be seeing, I didn't hurt it. Like, wow, geez, a colorist. I'm not a colorist. But I said some, I said some little shit. I was just um, letting people in on the conversation I was having with the bro on some nigga shit. Yeah. I said some nigga shit, and they started calling me a colorist. That's it's funny. like, man, if you know YG from YG, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all niggas know my exes, like, yeah. from back in the day. Ghetto yeah. girls. Man. Right. Black ones. 
<laughs> hey, we already but, know you already know he spin a block. You would you spin a block? I don't see why not. <laughs> if the block is hot. <laughs> That's what I said. If the block is hot, it's like, what? Stop playing. Do you go through their phone? Do you ever you ever went through a female phone before? Back when I was an immature young man, I did, but I would never do that ever again. And it wouldn't happen to me. I damn near don't even get jealous no more, you know? It's like, she gonna do what she gonna do. You don't control nobody but you. You know what I'm saying? On blush. Why, do you go through phones? Hell no, on blush. And I don't want to, and don't go through mine. Like, I feel like if you ain't paying my phone bill, the fuck you going through my phone for? Like, <laughs> and that's just like a person, it's like, bro, that's my shit. Like, you feel me? Do you go through, like, I ain't finna go through my girl purse and go f for, for nothing. I ain't gonna be going through her shit, her drawers at her, I'm not going through none of that. That's your shit, you feel me? Like if I'm like, hey, where the whoopty woo at? And you like, oh, it's in my purse or it's in my drawer. I'm gonna go bring you your purse and say, huh, grab it. She gonna be like, nah. I said, nah, I don't go through purses. I don't bloods, I don't do that. That's out. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, like, you feel me? That ain't a player. But then it's like, I didn't went through one before. You found some? I definitely found some <laughs> shit. My little heart got broke. And you know, I only got yeah. a little bit of heart left. And that motherfucker be getting broke. I see you, um, you promoted, like, a lot of music in the past. Videos dropped and everything. The album never came out. It's like, you got so much music. Like, when you go into that phase of dropping stuff and then you don't give us the album, like, what, what happens to those albums? It'll come out someday, bro. You know, I'm just moving to the next shit. I'm always doing music. That's what I do. So I always got some shit that I might have used to like, but I got some shit that I like better now, you know? Yeah. I think that's raw. I feel like I feel like sometimes as, fan, as fans of the music, we get upset. We get greedy. Yeah. We like, man, damn. You know, teases like that and then just don't drop. So I got y'all. It's all then, coming. Yeah, it's I also coming. admire you taking your time and giving us great pieces of art versus just throwing anything out there and hoping that it stick. So it's like a gift and a curse thing mm -hmm. from a fan's perspective, I would say, that we get teased like that and then we don't get it. But I, I honestly feel like, that's from the game, that's how I feel, bro. I honestly feel like, and I don't want to get like, I hate to keep bringing this shit up because it's like a, nigga ain't making no excuse, but I honestly feel like, like before the whole COVID shit happened, like, Niggas was dropping consistently, mm -hmm. being consistent, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was dropping, planning to drop and all that. And then when that shit happened, this shit, you know what I'm saying? That shit threw us off back like two, three years, you know? For us, that's what's like in California, like. like that shit was shut down. Yeah, everything stopped. So like, like we low key stopped. Like, like the music I've been creating like the past year and all that, like two years, I. I couldn't create that shit in, like during COVID. Like it wasn't like, I'm like, nigga. It was in a different space, like yeah, mentally. Yeah, cause wasn't nothing going on. So I'm the type of nigga, if it ain't happening, I can't rap about it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I just had to say, that. I felt like, I felt like niggas be, uh, like lately niggas just been, just been like, oh, niggas ain't dropping, niggas ain't dropping. It's like, chill out, bitch. We had to get our <laughs> shit. <laughs> bitch, we had to get our shit back together, bitch. You know what I'm saying? We had to get our shit back. Now niggas been recording, recording. We back, like, like niggas is back in that place where it's like, ooh, this shit is hot. <laughs> Put this shit out, it's up. Hell yes. Oh, the game. I feel like you always <clears throat> been evolving with the times. You never was like, oh man, Ty, like, he played out as old. It's like, you always evolve with the times. You stay on point. You're like, you know what's going on. I, like, I hear you say a lot about, like, I Am Piano being, like, the inspiration behind motion. Like, can you, like, elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, uh, at that time, I think I was just in Europe a lot. And when I had came back, uh, it was this new sound that I was hearing out there called I'm a Piano that I fell in love with. It was just a new approach. And I felt like it was a mixture of like Afro beats with like house music, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, Craig Kalman from Atlantic hit me up and he was like, yo, I got something for you. It had that feel. It wasn't quite on a piano, but it had that feel. And that was like my inspiration by making that song motion. So 
Shout out to my big dog, Craig. Are you working with any like up and coming West Coast artists? Um, yeah, nigga, uh, Lil Vader. That's that's my little bro. Uh, he going crazy. Yeah, he got a lot of bangers. Um, who else do I fuck with? I mean, I heard you. Uh, I heard a gang of shit. But you and Kaylin. Yeah, Kaylin. Y'all got some shit. That nigga going crazy, bro. Oh, but like, Shout hey, out to Todd, I said, hey, Todd, let me get one of them songs you got with Kaylin for my shit. He was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Blast, of course, um, he's doing his thing. How, how do you feel about AI and the music and how it's going? You think it's going to affect it, change it any kind AI of way? AI is dope for music uh, if you're dope and you know what to do with it. Uh, we used a lot of you know, AI on making my newest uh, album with Ye, as far as like with drums or with different sounds, you know, you could separate things now. So it's like mm. when back in the day, we would just sample the song straight up and just take the whole little piece. Now I could just take a piece and only take the drum, only take the vocal, only take the keys. So um, definitely mm. been taking advantage of that and just even flipping that, you know, you could just take a piece of a song then like speed it up or slow it down or change the key or chop it up or you know what I'm saying? So it's been a beautiful thing. And uh, don't run from it, it's here, you know what I'm saying? Like take advantage of it and be the best at it before somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you, I always say that you gotta learn, when something new come in, you don't shy away from it, yeah. you learn it. So you, exactly. can, so you can be ahead of the curve because if you're like, oh man, I ain't changing. All right, it's gonna get your ass right out the way. Mm -hmm. um, you made, you made like, you're an ex like an executive now. What was it like creating Easy Money? Easy Money was easy to create. Uh, it's me and my brother, Sean Barron, we partnered up. Sean Barron's also the man who signed me to Atlantic Records originally back in what, 2012. And uh, we teamed up made easy money. Uh, we signed Leon Thomas, uh, partnering up with Capital, and it's a fucking movie. Leon's one of the most talented artists I've ever met. Uh, a good human behind the fucking music shit, and uh, it's just taken off. The second album is about to come real soon. His tour, sold out and the next tour is being put together <laughs> that's dope man. Yeah, also looking for uh other artists to sign um i've listened to a couple new things and i got some shit in mind some shit in the works so it's, it's pretty mm, good. i know what you got up your sleeve like, yeah, i like man. it too i, I hope that shit work out for so sure. what do you game. look for in an artist when you're looking to sign artists what are you looking for uh, the, the, Talent, the freshest, dopest shit in the world. Not just like, you know, everybody, it seems like wants to be a rapper or wants to, but I don't want nothing that sounds like nobody else. I want to know like, where's the real shit at? You know what I'm saying? And it's out there for sure. It's people great. like Leon or like, Leon's there's like a, a couple other people I can name, but like, there's still those ones that come along and make you feel like, all right, shh, damn, there's somebody that actually still cares about making music and really knows how to play instruments or really knows how to sing and dance and perform. And, you know, there's a lot of that just like same thing out there, but like, where's the good shit? You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. I felt like that when, when I first heard Sinfa. I was like, oh, it's yeah. so, it was so refreshing to me, like, damn. Yeah. Because it's like, when I'm hearing a beat, I can tell when a real instrument being played. You know, you can tell when a real instrument being played on yeah. there and when it's, you know, it's just like NPC, basically. Yeah. So I'm like, when I was hearing Sinfa, I'm like, damn, it's like, oh, he really playing these instruments. Like you said, it's, re it's very refreshing to see somebody still in love with the way that you make music. Hey, yeah. I got a question, and this is, is, you know what I'm saying? You got, a you got a daughter, teenager, been a girl dad for years, big bro to little bro, you know what I'm saying? I'm raising two young ladies. What's some advice, you know what I'm saying, you can give me and everybody else, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. trying to have that good, open relationship, you know what I'm saying, with their young ones? Uh, just most importantly, 
be there and make time and especially be there for the important moments. Moments that are really important to them, you got to be there for that. Because it's like, who else do we have, bro? Like, on some player shit, niggas still ain't married, you know what I'm saying? We've been doing this shit for years, so it's like, we on, that's what we on, bro. And like, these bitches gonna come and go, homies gonna come and go, some of them stay around, but who's gonna be there like, all the way through this shit? And that's like, our daughters, you know what right. I'm saying? So it's like, we gotta be there for those, those moments and be the, those are the people we get the tightest with yeah, in this yeah. lifetime. You know what I'm saying? That's all we got. So when I be thinking about the future of my kids, like I don't want my daughters to ever feel like they can't come talk to me about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't want them to feel like they gotta hide some shit. You know what I'm saying? To their daddy because they scared or. You just can't make them feel like you're on, you know what I'm saying? You you can't make them feel like uh it's wrong to tell you, tell you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't, they gotta feel comfortable at all times, so you gotta just know how to come at it, at it. It's not about like being the tough guy with your daughters, it's about like, you know, you've been, being understanding. You, you've had life and you know how it goes, yeah. so you gotta guide them before, you yeah. know? And that, that's crazy, cause it, Nick, like my daughter, my oldest daughter, she be like, dad, you're aggressive. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck. Mm. Yeah. I said, all right, I got to figure this out. <laughs> I, I got to figure this shit out. Because yeah, I don't want, like, I want my daughters, you know what I'm saying? Be open. Always, yeah, like, like talk to me, holla at me, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you know, like, no, nah, that ain't the play. That ain't how you supposed yeah, to do it's that. It's like, you know, like, once they get about 14, 15, they're going to start liking boys. Then it's going to be some boy that they start talking to. And... Yeah, 14, 15, you don't need to be doing all that. Mm -hmm. You need to be doing your studies. <laughs> da, 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 da. But 16, different yeah. game. it's a different game, you know? Yeah. And it's like, no, of course, I didn't like the little nigga that she was talking to just because, like, I don't want to give my daughter away. Like, it's yeah. my daughter, it's my baby, you oh, know? Man. But it's like, that's coming, bro. So yeah. you got to embrace it. Yeah, man. And yeah. just like coach them on how it really is. Like, yeah. when they come back, like, oh, this just happened. Cause you see, like, they just feel down. Something's wrong with them. And mm -hmm. it's like, what happened? And they're not telling you. They don't want to, you know what I'm saying? But you know it's because of this little nigga. And you're like, what the fuck? fuck like, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. You gotta just be there for them, bro. Like I yeah. said, them important times. I think Let I'm them know it's like, oh, it's also, we work hard, bro. Like. We got it so, so lit that it's like they don't even need no nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they learn like the it's highest levels. level of things. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, what can a nigga do for them at that point? You yeah, know? Yeah, That's another thing I would say to strive for as a father, to make yeah. sure you do it before another nigga can. Right, right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. Always said, have a lot of money because if a dude come around with a lot of money to buy, he can buy your daughter. Huh. But if you always had paid, you know, she like, my daddy always took care of me. My daddy always did. I think it's the perfect balance of being a friend and a father. You At the same like, time, like a, teaching them how, to get, how to get their own, you know? Yeah, most definitely. I don't think you can be too friendly because then they're not going to take you serious. So it's like that yeah. fine line. And I think that's just dope. Are you like a strict dad? Or are you like taking her to the concerts and all that too? I'm fucking in the concert. So, <laughs> of course, she was going to concerts her whole life. She was around everything. Uh, from in the beginning when her favorite artist was Justin Bieber to when her favorite artist was NBA Youngboy, you know what I'm saying? Damn. <laughs> you fuck with yeah. Youngboy? Yeah. I like him. Good, good, cool young dude. It's a pleasure to get that, have the opportunity to sit down with you, Ty, man. This goes way back years. We like, this right here is coming full circle just to sit across from you and YG. It's just dope to see like that's real nigga shit. That it, it's real nigga shit. Like, homies really stay down, and that shit is rare to come by. So it's like, to see y'all still intact, y'all homie, y'all still picking up the phone, calling each other, still doing music, it's a beautiful sight to see. And I just want to tell both of y'all that while I got the mic. For sure. Oh, I bet. Appreciate it, bro. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like Todd said earlier, we, we, 
we just getting started with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Hey, I got I got one more question and shit. When it's all said and done, like later on in life, how you want it all to play out, Ty? What you mean? Like, like how you want your like 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 yo like how you want your life? You know what I'm saying? When you in your fifties, like what you want your life to look like? Like when you in your fifties, I know we still gonna be uh, doing music and working and touring and shit. But at the point when you in your fifties, I feel like you supposed to be like, nigga, my life is set. I don't gotta do shit if I don't want to, and still yeah, live um, how I want to live. What I've learned now, like at my age and like how, just seeing how it is for like my OGs and like older people that I know that are successful, it's like, this shit don't stop. <laughs> you know what I'm you saying? Know, no, Until you stop. So it's like, we just gotta work so hard now to where if we do wanna take like those vacations, we can, which we, we can, which we have. And uh, like, <laughs> we gotta just keep on, keep on going, it's like, now, like, you got your building. I got my building. There's a lot of motherfuckers that talk about watches and showing all their cash and mm -hmm. big bank take little bank and all this little yeah. shit. But it's like, how many buildings you got? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, exactly. how much property? Yeah. <laughs> Stop playing with us. The real, so the real like, shit. Yeah. Um, and then what's the next level after that? It's levels to this shit, right? So in my 50s, I feel like we should maybe be looking into getting our mega yachts and... You know what I'm yes. saying? Sandro Pay type, that's Dr. Dre type shit. That's you know what, what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's what, what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I think okay. that was a good question, YG. I, I want to ask you a question. More recent, like last year, sometime, Andre 3000 said, you know, he feel like the older he got, the, the less he feel like he has something to rap about. Do you feel like that day will ever come where you just like, I'm, I feel like I'm too old, I don't have nothing else to talk about? I don't know, man. Uh, there's always something to talk about if you just like, it's just all how you view yourself and how you view your melody and your your flow and the way maybe he just feels like his flow doesn't match with these beats or maybe he feels like he has to do these type of beats in order to, but nah, like, I feel like, like you said, no matter what time it is, I could like wiggle my way into whatever it is, whatever the sound is, I know how to use my instrument. Maybe he just feels like his instrument is flute now, and it's not like his vocal, you know? But that nigga's like, to me, one of the most incredible. I feel like he could have hopped in one of the, maybe these beats are corny to him, maybe like. That's what I was gonna say. I feel like he's so high level, like, with the art, you know what I'm saying? He probably looking at it like, nigga, I'm too, like, yeah. my level too high for this shit, like. And of course he knows how to like, hop on these type shits too, but it's like, Nah, like it doesn't deserve my instrument. Yeah. Man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, that type of talk. Yeah. He you know that's that what nigga. I feel like. Yeah, he like, bro, I'm I'm a, like the level of my my artistry is too high to be doing this shit. Like yeah. he probably fucking designing like hundred million dollar mansions or something right now. Probably doing shit like that. You know, who knows? So on the 400 podcast, we have a reoccurring segment that we do. We, it's called Keeping It 400, right? It's just a bunch of rapid fire questions we ask you. We just want you to keep it 400. But we know you is already, but we just want you to keep it 400. Snoop Dogg or Ice Cube? Oh, here we go. That's tough. Snoop Dogg or Ice Cube? I would have to say Snoop Dogg because that's my big bro. And uh, Ice Cube, I'm a big fan, but Snoop Dogg, that's bro. What would you say is your favorite country or city to do a show in? Favorite country or city to do a show in? Uh, L.A. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> L.A., my city. What's the biggest check you ever cashed? Biggest check I ever personally cashed? Like, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Pizza but, or wings? Um... Pizza or wings? Pizza or wings? Pizza oh. or wings? What you prefer? Wings. Pizza? Oh, yeah. Wings, wings yeah. A wing guy. What's the, what's, what city got the best wings? Shit, if I make them, it's the best. That's on God. <laughs> Joey's. 
Joey's that yeah, hibachi that shit wing. like tastes regular. Like yeah. you gotta pull up. You ain't never had my. Uh, I had the wings at at that place by your house. Yeah, but you ain't never had when I cook them. No, no, I no. Have. We gotta do that. Okay, but yeah. what's the most important part of an outfit? The shoes or the shades? The most important piece of the outfit. Shoes or the or the shades. I feel like everything, bro. Everything, all the details. That's what make the outfit. You can't leave one thing out. Hello. But if I don't have the glasses, that's still gonna be lit. Give me your Mount Rushmore arm. If my feet is out, it's still gonna be lit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me your Mount Rushmore RB list. Mount Rushmore RB All time. list. So, we talking about male and female. You can put or? male and female up there. Shit, I can't name gospel artists too. You can name gospel artists too. I can. You can. I'll let you do it. Go ahead. All right, my favorite singers of all time. It's not gonna say R and B. They're gonna just, just say gonna singers. Say singers. Mount Rushmore. Kim Burrell. Uh. Man. Brian McKnight. And uh, who else, man? Luther Vandross. <laughs> Let's go. Luther. <laughs> Luther was crazy. Yeah, you said three, right? Wow. Oh. Four. Oh, the four hundred. <laughs> uh, one more. Uh, Nate Dog. Oh, Nate. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. That's, that's hard. That's hard. Damn, we almost got the same list. I got a Nate Baker on mine. Nate. I feel you. Nate, 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 dog. That's a, ooh. Yeah, I that's, ain't never thought yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's far. That's far. Like what Ty, like what Ty bring to the table for the coast outside of like being a real R&B artist, he bring like that Nate dog vibe, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, for us, you know? The voice you're going to go get for every singing track for sure, exactly. like Nate was around. Oh, whenever mm -hmm. you need some vocals. Call Todd. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, the gay, long live Nate. If you could yeah. change one thing about your life, what would it be? If I could change one thing about my life, it would be uh, shit. I don't think I would change shit, bro. Cause like everything that happened had to happen in order to get to the next thing. Whether it was like some great shit or some fucked up shit, it's like everything was a lesson to learn how to like be able to handle the next time where it happens. Cause like you can't skip steps. If like I would have skipped one of them, I would have had to learn uh, learn it another way, you know? So right. I just appreciate God and uh, everything that I've been through, you know? That's a dope answer, man. I appreciate you for coming through, sitting on a red couch, 400. Yeah. Is there anything you got to tell your fans? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for, uh, you know, rocking with me over the years, rocking with us over the years. Uh, to the new ones, you know, welcome to the journey. Uh, Vultures is out now. Make sure you go stream that motherfucking 400.